If you do nothing, you're going to get criticized, which is perfectly normal. But when you're trying to make things more developed and better, you still get criticized. Even obstructed, which is incredibly hard to understand. But SpaceX, the company that probably understands this the most, the process of getting a rocket launch license is getting even harder. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. So we all know that the space race is increasingly becoming intense. Nations are starting to take strong actions to overthrow the dominance of the U.S. in aerospace. In this race, the U.S.'s advantage over other countries lies in its strong private aerospace companies. With world-leading technological capabilities, they'll be the key to helping the U.S. defeat its competitors. However, to fully leverage these advantages, companies and the government need to work together. This collaboration creates the combined strength that allows the U.S. to stay as the top dog. Sadly, it seems that things are not headed in that direction. Instead, there's a lot of issues. This can be clearly seen between SpaceX and the FAA. This relationship's gotten even worse over the recent days, particularly regarding SpaceX's space program. Now, I don't want to talk smack about the FAA, but what they're doing is really making life difficult for SpaceX. As you may know, the FAA recently once again delayed Starship's fifth flight, and this seems to have tested the patience of Elon as well as SpaceX. SpaceX had to publish a fairly long blog post condemning the FAA's lengthy investigation process. This seems to be a hallmark of this government agency since ancient times. But the question is, why has everything else changed for the sake of development, but they've not? Indeed, old and outdated regulations can't keep up with the development of modern technology. Without commenting on SpaceX's post, the FAA surprisingly announced a fine for SpaceX related to two launches last year. It's not clear why it took more than a year for the agency to announce that fine. Could it be that if not due to the prolonged work processes, it's because the FAA didn't like what SpaceX said? No matter how we look at it, the FAA has faced criticism within the space community. And of course, this isn't the first time the FAA has made life difficult for SpaceX, especially in the development of Starship. To date, the FAA has been involved in reviewing the licenses for Starship flights, and they've delayed three launches, IFT-1, IFT-2, and finally Starship Flight 5, which we just talked about. Notably, regarding the license for Starship's first launch, the FAA had as many as five delays. In preparation for the first orbital launch, SpaceX proposed an environmental assessment to the FAA in late 2021, but it wasn't until Feb 22 that they initiated the PEA program for Starship. According to their reporting timeline, it was supposed to be published in May 22, but the FAA postponed it to June 22. And nearly 10 months later, in April 23, Starship could finally carry out its launch. The reason given to cover up the FAA's delay is the time-consuming consultations with local authorities or technical issues beyond their control. To be perfectly frank, this is due to their cumbersome and quite unprofessional evaluation process. The PEA assessment could have been done way earlier if the FAA had taken the PEA seriously from the get-go. As for Starship's second launch, SpaceX had to wait seven months to get the FAA launch license. It cannot be denied that part of the time SpaceX spent during this period was to rebuild the launch pad, which had been destroyed by the power of SpaceX's previous launch. On top of that, they had to build a massive steel cooling plate with a water deluge system to be continuously used in future launches. But the delays of the FAA's process are undeniable. Clearly, by August 23, SpaceX had completed the repairs and tests on the launch pad in preparation for the flight, but they didn't officially get the license until November. Even more astonishing is that it's believed that the agency had to speed up the investigation due to pressure from SpaceX, NASA, and, of course, public opinion. How about longer ago? Was the FAA this bad back then? Oh my goodness. It has to be said that the FAA has got a history of delays that are so unbearable that not everyone can endure it like SpaceX and Elon. In December 2020, SpaceX was attempting to launch and land their first ever Starship prototype. The FAA worked with SpaceX and granted them a launch license, but they could only launch under certain weather conditions. Minutes before SN8 took off, the FAA told SpaceX to cancel it. SpaceX employed at Mission Control ignored this message since they thought the weather was fine and that the FAA inspector just didn't have the latest weather data. 
After an impressive launch, SN8 had a hard landing and ended in a massive explosion. Although no one was hurt, the FAA was angry that SpaceX ignored their launch requirements. And they did stipulate that an FAA inspector has to be present for every flight of Starship from Boca Chica. The rigorous oversight from agencies behind the scenes played a role in delaying SpaceX's subsequent testing efforts with Starship SN9. The gleaming 16-story steel rocket was fully fueled and ready for takeoff. However, at that moment, FAA officials were still in the process of reviewing the license for the test and SpaceX had made some changes to its permit application. During that time, Elon expressed extreme frustration with the process, tweeting, Unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. The license violation and license review process have escalated tensions between SpaceX and the FAA. For years, Musk and others in the space industry have bemoaned the age-old U.S. regulatory framework for launch licensing as innovation and competition in space skyrockets. The delay of this agency is also manifested in the launch of Starship's SN11 with a very silly reason, as the FAA inspector just couldn't get to Starbase in time. In the end, you gotta wonder if the FAA truly understands the importance of SpaceX's Starship and the ability to launch it frequently from Boca Chica. Or we can ask the question of where Elon could potentially relocate Starship for launches without having to worry about these FAA regs. But that's not exactly easy either. SpaceX can't relocate from the U.S. because of the ITARS regulations that would prohibit them from exporting any of their rocket technology. ITARS is the law prohibiting the exportation of technology that could be used for making munitions. Back in the 1960s, the U.S. alone had the technology to adjust the thrust of a rocket. For the purposes of rockets, if your guidance system could adjust the thrust, then you'd have a much greater control over accuracy. And this was very important, especially given the backdrop of the Cold War. And the technology to prevent that technology from falling into the wrong hands was pretty important. Starship's platform has largely been discussed in public media and presented on numerous occasions. It's got some powerful rocket motors that it uses in large quantities, and it almost certainly has technology that could fall into ITAR's jurisdiction. Therefore, it is hoped that there will be changes in the management of government agency as well as the policies to create favorable conditions for SpaceX to continue to develop. Starship's importance isn't just limited to the company, but also holds a very important meeting for the presence and leadership of both civil and military sectors of the United States in space. In the short term, NASA selected a variant of the Starship spacecraft as a lander to bring Artemis astronauts to the moon's surface, needed for the Artemis 3 mission as soon as 2026. But the impact of a long-term license suspension or revocation would definitely slow down the timeline for the launch. Beyond NASA, Starship's part of a rapidly expanding private sector launch industry. There's no current private sector equivalent that could rapidly deploy satellite constellations or deliver major logistical infrastructure into orbit like satellite and refueling stations, which could be critical as geopolitical tensions on Earth escalate into space. There could be a future peer commercial competitor to Starship, but surveying the current landscape and understanding how much time and money goes into building rockets, that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Besides, the Chinese space program has grown rapidly in recent decades. The PRC launched its first astronaut into space back in 03 and built a space station, Tianyang, which was completed in 22. Longer-term plans include building a permanent settlement on the moon called the International Lunar Research Station, which it aims to build with Russia and other partner countries. While the ILRS aims to rival NASA's multilateral Artemis, China is closely watching Starship's development. China is building its own next-gen super heavy lift rocket, the Long March 9. Starship's development is still far ahead, but it's clear which rocket China is comping, and it's not the SLS. Initially, Long March was expendable, but in November of 2022, designers decided to switch to a version with a reusable first stage. By March of the following year, China announced it'd be fully reusable. In other words, the result of the Starship test has geopolitical implications, too. Without Starship, it's not unreasonable to think that China would have a reusable super heavy lift rocket that could quickly deliver crew, cargo, and infrastructure to low Earth orbit and beyond, not just the United States. So, it is imperative that parties work to produce a timely solution of the legal and these regulatory issues that engage with the local community on environmental impact. Ensuring that SpaceX has taken the steps to ensure such damage to and around the sites does not happen again, and allows for testing to move forward this year to keep the U.S. competitive. That's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching. Take care and God bless. Bye.